people and welcome to Finest Skills Hub here. We learn, we connect, and we grow. If you are designing a dashboard in Excel and your data has multi-currency, well, you can use slices to give your user the option to switch the values between the currencies. In this short video, we'll walk through how to get this done with slices and a little formula. So if you are game, join me in Excel and let's go through this together. Okay, so we begin with a demo of our final week. So this is a very simple dashboard. I have inflows, outflows, and my net position here. And a little chart here to show the profit trend for the period, right? Now, this is the default currency, which is USD, right? Now, I can switch. So if you pay attention to the values, you realize that if I go here, I select GBP, all the values, including the charts, the tables also update. I can bring it to Ghana CDs. Okay, so here, what we used is the original data set. Okay, so this is what we want to achieve. So let's get straight into it and then work this from scratch. Okay, so we begin with our data sets. The first one here is a table that contains our transactions. And then on the right, I have a small table that has the various currencies and the corresponding rates. So we want to use these two tables to create the dashboard that you saw earlier. Now, you realize that I have my date, I have my description, I have my amount. There's a column here that shows type, whether it's an expense or income, and then these attributes to my right, right? This is a table but it will help if we name it so that's easy for us to use in our calculations. So I'll name this transactions and then I'll come here and then name this one rates. Okay, please take note of the names. Okay, so I have transactions, I have rates. Now these two tables are going to be used in my calculations. If you have a situation like that, it is best to put it in the data model. So the data model is located in Power Pivot right if you don't have this you can go to the data tab okay in the data tool set and then activate it here so you go to power pivot window and it's enabled right so if i'm here i'm just going to stand in the table and then add this to the data model right so this is added to the data model right now there's a lot of things you can do here in a data model calculating dax Okay, creating your date tables and all that. This has been added, so I'll come and then add the second one, stand in here, and then add this to the data model. All right. So again, in the data model, you can create connections between the tables, okay? And then you can create a pivot table out of that. So this has also been added, and then I'll close this. Now that we've done this, we can create a pivot table out of these tables, right? So standing in here, I'll go to insert in the pivot table. I have the option to insert it directly from the data model. So I'll click on this. Now for demonstration purposes, I'll place the pivot table in this existing worksheet. So I'll direct it somewhere around M. Okay, drop this down and then click OK. Okay, so I now have my pivot table here realize that I have my two tables, the rates and the transactions. Okay. If I open up the rates, you see all the various columns here, all right? So if I check amount, it goes into the value section. So this 7912 is a net figure, okay? So it takes all the income, the positive numbers, and then subtracts the negative numbers, which is the outflow. So if I highlight this, right, you realize that I have 7912 here, okay? So this is how we are going to do it. Now, what I want here is to get the inflow calculated and then the outflow calculated as separate values, right? Now realize that based on the structure of our table, this will not be calculated easily because all the numbers set in amounts, right? I only have the type to help me know whether it's an expense or an income. So to do that, it means that I have to introduce type as a filter in my pivot table. So I'll take type here. So when I drop the type, you realize that I have a filter here. Then from here, I can come, 
drop this down and then choose income from here click ok okay so this is how i get just income right by using the filter now instead of going through all this we're already in a data model so i can create a direct measure or calculation to give me hundred thousand without going through all the filters right so to do that i'll come back to my power pivot come to measures and then start a new measure so measures essentially are calculations right so i'll come to this new measure i have my dialog box here now this i'm going to call income okay and using the same logic that we used to create this in a pivot table we are going to use a function here called calculate right so i'll start with calculate calculate needs an expression so the expression is the original calculation that you want to filter right so here i'm summing all the amount so i'll put in sum okay of amount from my table right so this is my expression what we had earlier but i want to filter this okay where the transaction type okay so transaction is the name of the table type is the column is equal to right income so i have income here okay so I've just expressed the same logic we used here in this formula. Sum amounts and then filter where type is equal to income, right? Now I can check my format. So I can come here, check my format, use a thousand separator, reduce this to zero decimal, please check the formula, everything is okay here, and then click okay, right? So if I do this, I have this 100,000 as my measure, right? Now, it's the same as what we did earlier. So it means that without the filter, okay, and then without this one, I can just draw this income here and it gives me my direct income calculation. Right. Now, let's do the same thing for expense. So pretty the same logic. Come to new measure. Come to the measure name, which is expense. Okay, come here. This is calculate. I'll bring a sum, okay amounts in my transactions table okay where my transaction type is equal to expense so i'll check this formula everything is fine here set the same format that i used earlier and then click ok so i now have income and expense now from this i can create my profit measure I take note of the sign of expense so it means instead of subtracting i'll add so i'll come here new measure and then here i have my profit right so in my profit because i already have my measures i'll call the income so i have my income here and then add my expense here so come to my number use thousand separator and then reduce this to zero decimal please Right. So I have my income, my expense, and my profit calculated. If I was using this in my dashboard, right, these are the base currencies. Now, what I want to do is to be able to modify if I select any currency from this table. Right. So that is what we want to do. Now, the logic is this. If this table, which is the currency table, is not selected or is not filtered with any slicer, then give me the base values. Right. However, if I select or filter this table, then use the corresponding rate right, from what I've selected in the slicer and then multiply or adjust the income and expense values by the selected rate. Right? So that's the logic we are going to use. Now, in that case, we are going to modify these calculations that we did earlier. So I'll come in to my measures. This time I'll not to create a new measure, but to manage the one that we did earlier. That's to edit right so let's go into the expense formula now using the same logic so i'll come here okay and then step down so let me just increase this a bit now this is my original formula so i'll come and then introduce an if statement so the if statement is here now the if statement is going to test if the table is filtered so i'll introduce an is filtered function okay on the rates table right on the currency column okay so i'm going to say that if this is filtered that is my logic test 
right? So if this is filtered, then what I want you to do is that that original formula that we calculated, which is here, right? I want you to multiply it, okay, by whatever has been selected by the slicer. So I will come and then use a function called selected value. These are DAX functions. You get them in a data model in Excel. So the selected value will come from the rate table, okay, from the rate column. Okay, so I'll close this, All right? So I just multiplied the original calculation by the selected value here. So that will be my result if it is true, right? But if it is not true, then return the original calculation. That is the original one that we calculated here. So I'll paste this for if it is not true, right? And then close my final bracket for the if statement, right? So let's go over this again. If the slicer selects anything from that table, okay, the original calculation we did, which was giving us the expense, multiply it by the rate that has been selected from the rate table. Otherwise, give me the original calculation, right? So we check our formula, everything is fine here. It's the same logic we are going to use for the income. So we might as well just select this, okay, control C, and then we'll close this one. So our expense has been adjusted. We'll come to the income, edit that one, and then just paste this here. Okay, now instead of expense, we are going to edit the criteria or the filter to income, and also edit this one okay to income okay so i'll check my formula it's okay here click okay and then i'll close my formula okay so we now have these values okay now let's insert the slicer that is going to filter this table so i'll stand in the pivot table go to insert and then insert my slicer over here i have the default table which is transactions when i go to all i have the two tables so i will insert my slicer from the currency and then click OK. OK, so this is what we have. All right, let's test this. So if I have nothing selected, I have my base dollar values, right? Now, if I convert this to Ghana CS, realize that these update automatically and then GBP converts this to GBP. These values, you can use it anywhere in your dashboard, right? Now, the good thing about this is that it's dynamic. If I add a new currency, so if I go add euro, let's assume that the euro to the dollar is 0 0.8, okay? And then I come and then refresh data set. So, all right, so for status, I expect euro to pop up here, okay? And then if I now click this, I have my values converting to euro as well. My base case dollar is also here. If I've not selected anything, I have my base values, right? So in the end, what we did was that we applied these, okay, to create this dashboard. If you use it, of course, in any visual, okay, especially in this case where I've created a monthly profit trend, yeah, because the values respond to the measures, all these are dynamic and then they respond to your slices as well. So hopefully you learned something that you can apply if you are using a data set that contains multi-currency, you can pick these formulas and then use them. So please practice and add it to your list of Excel tricks. Thanks so much for watching. If this video was helpful and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your WhatsApp, you can send add to this WhatsApp number. We'll add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel, Finance Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. Please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.